Because if you're like me, I find myself all the time, in fact, probably daily, choosing self over the Lord. Now, it might not be in, in some horrible, sinful way, but even in my motivations or my attitudes, my actions that, that spring out of my attitudes, uh, I think it's true. What's in, the, the, what's in my heart is what's going to come out in my life. And so part of this book is to, and this study, is to try to examine what's going on in my little heart of hearts. What are some of the things that I can be uh, either afraid of saying, or I'm just ashamed of saying, or I'm even too prideful and I get a little bit callous and I don't say. Uh, I don't admit, I don't confess. By the way, confessing is agreeing with God about an issue. And so what are those things that I'm not agreeing with God about? And how am I not following the leadership of the Holy Spirit in my life? And so again, that's the, the idea here. Um, so hopefully every, at least every couple has a book. If you're uh, single, please, I hope you have a, a book also. Part of uh, this study is going to be you following some reading in this book. You mean we have homework? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, by the way, you should be reading your Bible. Oh, not as big an amen on that one. Um, you should be. And if you're not, this is going to lead you in kind of day by day. Here's where you can be reading in your Bible to think about some of these things. Now, this is not, uh, we're not talking about hours and hours of study here. We're talking about taking a few minutes out of your day and maybe even using this for some devotion time. Um, you know, there's a, there's a little bit of reading in this book. It's like two or three pages or so a day. Uh, it's not hard. That would take you about five minutes or so. Um, even the, the slowest reader would take you about five or ten minutes. Right? And then there's some time uh, to think about your Bible reading and what was said in the book in the workbook. All right? And if you didn't get one of these workbooks, I want you to please see me because I like everybody to have a workbook. Um, and all it does is just kind of, again, lead you through some of these passages. So if you have a workbook, if you want, just uh, open it up here. And you can open it really to the table of contents. And a lot of what we're going to do today is just some introduction uh, to this study. And then we're going to kind of try to get into part of the first lesson here. All right. So table of contents, you see there is a before that gets started, there's a how to use it. We'll go through that here in just a second. And then you see it's 13 study units. All right. Now, sometimes that translates into a week. Uh, other times we might take some time, like this first one, we're not going to get through all of the first study unit, and so that'll span a couple of weeks' time, all right? So we're not just locked into 13 weeks, and then we're done, and then everybody's a shining, happy Christian, and, and everybody's going, that's not how it works, all right? Um, we, we're going to take our time and kind of go through this. Um, I'm going to teach some, but the Doug's going to teach some, and uh, so we're going to kind of trade off and on um, in different spots. Uh, but I, I hope it is a help to you, and I would just encourage you and implore you, and if I need to, I'll get down on knee and beg you uh, to stay up with this. It, it, this will be a help to you. Um, again, not because it's just some book, but because it's taking Bible principles and trying to make application in our lives, all right? And this is an important thing for you and for me. If you're a saved person, there ought to be a desire in your heart to grow for the Lord to become more like the image of his son. This will be a help to you if you'll follow what's going on here and you'll understand what the Bible is teaching us. Um, it, it'll be a help to you. So I, I would encourage you, um, work on it. Take time to do this. Um, if you don't have a scheduled time right now to do devotions in your life, schedule some time. Whether you get up early and you're one of those weird people that likes mornings, um, then do it in the morning. You know get up and, and take some time, just a few minutes, and, and uh, do your study. If you're one of those that enjoys staying up later, and that's when you think better, or maybe during the middle of the day, whenever it is, just plan out some time and do your, your study for that day. And each day, you'll have a, a, set, a set place in here to, to go through it. Um, if you turn on to the page about how to use the study guide, it should just be the next page. There's just a welcome there. There's an introduction. It kind of tells you about each section in each daily study time. 
about what to do. And so you'll see there's some lecture notes. That's, that'll be the class. Lecture notes will be the class. We don't, we're not doing the video. We'll teach this class. We have teachers to teach it. And so we'll help you to fill in the blanks in that section. And then there's some daily study time. And if you turn to Roman numeral six, just the next page there, you'll see there's a little highlighted section that says take time to read the text. That's this book, all right? Like I said, two, three, four pages each section. Take time to reflect upon the truth. There's some questions. So as you read through, there's some questions. Hey, um, on this page, or when we were talking about this, what, what kind of stood out to you? What was a help to you? What did the Lord use to speak to your heart about something? I think the Bible says that this book can change your heart and life. All right? I, I believe that with all my heart. But if I'm just a reader of the word and not a doer, then I deceive myself. And so part of being a doer is to have a plan of, here's where I need to change, here's the steps I'm going to take to change. All right, does that make sense? Um, I can't build something without instructions. And sometimes for me they turn into destructions. Uh, but I need help. I need to know what, what's the next steps. Well, part of this is helping you to not just be a hearer, but a doer. All right, and so read the text. How did it help you? What were some things that, that the Lord used to speak to you? Then on the next page there, take time to renew your mind. And there's a, a scripture passage in each of these studies for, to, to, for you to remember, to, to memorize, to hide God's word in your heart. For example, in lesson one, it's Romans 12, 1 and 2. Now, some of you have that passage already memorized. Great. Think on that passage through the week. All right? I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is a reasonable service. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. How? By the renewing of your mind. That you may prove it is that good and acceptable perfect will of God. All right? That's your verses for example, for unit one. So there's a time to renew your mind, time to respond to the Lord, and uh, there's a, a, time, a chance for you to respond there. Some of you might keep a journal. That's great. You can use this book to uh, keep your journal during this study. Take some time to reorder your life. Talks about the activities that you're going to go through throughout the day. What are some of the things I'm going to be involved in today that I know of that's going to help me that I can apply these principles? All right? And then that little paragraph under it takes time to change. I would encourage you to read that. Um, don't take shortcuts. Right? <laughs> There's no shortcuts to spiritual maturity. It's just you're, you don't wake up and say, oh, today I'm spiritual and mature. Um, I wish that was the case, but that's not how it works. Right? You, you have to take the time, and it takes some discipline to do that. I would expect that my medical doctor, I don't want to go to the medical doctor that skipped the day on, um, you know, uh, being, having chest congestion. I, I hope they got an A in that, all right? I hope they did well enough to, you know, go to class and take care of themselves and learn what they need to learn so that they can help me. Well, it's the same thing. If I don't take the time to study God's word and learn from what he has for me, how can I expect to be the mature Christian he wants me to be? I just, I can't do that. All right? And so take the time to study it and make sure it's an important part of your life. All right? um, so let's just kind of dive right in here. In page three is unit one, understanding biblical change. If you don't have a pen, there's probably one in front of you there in the pew pocket. If not, there might be one behind you. Um, but we will, uh, I've got some outlines here and I, Here's what happens. Every time you want to use something, it seems to break. I don't know how that works. Um, this, the projector over here was working yesterday <laughs> when I looked at the presentation and went through it all. And it was working this morning, and then all of a sudden it shut off. So we're going to use this one for today in the Sunday school. We'll probably shut that off for the, the service time just because I can't stand being unbalanced and leaning to one side. Um, but it'll be helpful to you, hopefully, to be able to see it. I'm a visual person, so sometimes going through the blanks and, and uh, being able to see it is a help. Um, so, the introduction there, um, anybody that doesn't need to be changed, anybody that's perfect yet? Good, amen, I'm glad, I'm glad we realized that uh, no one's perfect, everybody needs some, to take some time to change. Um, have you ever had anybody say something to you that uh, it hurt, and, but you knew it was true? They saw something in your life and uh, they pointed it out to you? And you didn't like it, and maybe you didn't like them at the moment because, man, that's a little bit close to home, brother or sister. Um, why are you talking about that? I mean, you know. And so the verse that comes up in our mind is, well, why don't you take the beam out of your own eye, you know, you jerk. 
But the issue is, are we listening to maybe the Lord using someone to speak to our heart, to speak to our life? Hey, brother, you, you are lacking in this area. If you've had somebody do that, um, understand usually, hopefully, it's because they love you enough to want to see you to make that change. They see something in their own life that maybe God has helped them with, and maybe they're, they want to be a help to you, all right? Let's not always jump to the conclusion that, oh, man, his motives were wrong, or he's just, you know, being sanctimonious or being holier than thou. Why don't we look to ourselves first and say, hey, Lord, what do you have in this criticism, in this observation that I might need, all right? Understand, you're, you're not perfect. Understand, no one else is perfect. So ask the Lord as we go through this for some help. Ask the Lord to help you understand where you're not uh, matching up, so to speak, all right? Now, in every one of these, and uh, again, I'm going to go through this on the first one just to, to help you to get it and to, to understand what's, what's being done here. In each one of these lessons, there's, you see in the middle of the page on page three, the knowledge objectives. And so by the end of this study, by the end of this first section here, this first unit, Here's some things that we should be able to do. Number one, we should be able to explain God's primary goal for wanting you to make changes in your life. Why does God want you to do that? All right, we should be able to understand that. Now, again, I won't go through these every time, just this once. Number two, here's what I ought to be doing at the end of this, this lesson. I ought to be able to summarize the Holy Spirit's role in making biblical change. Now, this will be in your study, all right? So don't think, oh man, how am I going to do this? This sounds daunting. No, it'll be right in your reading, in the study, in the lecture, you know, in our class time. So, but just think, be thinking that way. Number three, explain the three parts of biblical change. What does the Bible say about change in me? And then number four, define the term discipleship and explain the important part it plays in life's relationships, all right? What is discipleship? How is that going to help me? And so then here's our application objectives also. By the end of this week, and we'll call that the, the unit of the study, you should be responding to what you have learned by, number one, identifying specific areas of your life that need biblical change. If, you're, if you like writing in your book, this is your book. Um, we bought it for you. If there's something that the Lord speaks to your heart about, then why don't you write it down? <laughs> write it down and write down the date. Maybe even the verse the Lord used to speak to your heart. Um, write it in your textbook if you want, in the, in the, uh, the actual book. Uh, as you read it, if the Lord speaks to your heart about something, then just write it down. I found that's been a help in my own life. And then I get to go back and say, I remember the Lord using that. And I still need work in some of those things. All right. But just use the, use the resources and write those things down. Allow the Lord to make application in your life. Number two, noticing times during your day. This is what you should be doing. Noticing times during your day when you can cooperate with God's plan to sanctify you. In other words, those times when the Holy Spirit knocks on your heart and says, hey, this is what you should do. Hey, this is what you should stop doing. Hey, I want you to say this to this person or send a text to that, that individual or be an encouragement in some way. Um, however the Lord is leading, that's what we're talking about. Identify parts of your day that the Lord can use you and to see this change take place. And then number three, asking God to burden you for the needs of others around you who also need to make biblical change. All right, so ask the Lord for help in each of these areas. All right, let's get into the study today, and uh, we'll just uh, introduce it and get as far as we can for today, and then uh, we'll, we'll move on. But number one, on your outline there in the introduction, this study, first of all, is about that word that we use, sanctification. All right, and so that's your blank, is the word sanctification. All of this, the goal of this is to talk about being sanctified or being made to be holy. All right, that's the goal. Now, is anybody perfect? No, we, we, we mentioned that. It's not perfection. The issue is, am I being more, me, made more into the image of Jesus Christ? All right? Can I be holy? Does the Bible say I'm supposed to be holy? Yes, yes it does. For it is written, be holy for I am holy. So can I live that way? Yes, it's possible. The problem is never God, the problem is always me. All right? Am I not being obedient to what God has me to do. So this study, number one, is about sanctification. All right? So once a person becomes a Christian, then the idea is the Holy Spirit is working in their life, helping them, encouraging them, strengthening them. There's a process that begins the day you get saved to change you to become more like the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, what does he use to accomplish that change? 
Well, he uses his word, right? Uh, he uses his Holy Spirit. He uses the local church. He uses good Christian friends. He uses all kinds of different things to, to bring about the change. And in a sense, what we're talking about, and this is number two on your outline, the, the, the sanctification that we're talking about is a progressive thing, right? It's not like, um, well, once we get to week 13, then we'll be sanctified. No, again, that's not how it happens. Or uh, five years from now, God will really be done with probably that sanctification work. No, this is a gradual thing. Right? It just it keeps going and going and going until I receive my perfection, so to speak, when the Lord either comes in the rapture to carry me home or I pass off of this earth and my soul enters into heaven. All right? um, unless this corruptible put on, puts on incorruption. Right? Unless this body is made to be perfect. And so what Paul is talking about is that, that progress. Uh, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. In other words, I haven't arrived yet, but this one thing I do. Uh, I'm pressing toward the mark for the prize of the high calling God in Christ Jesus. In other words, it's, it's continual process. God is continuing to work and to work and to work and to work in each and every one of us. And if he needed to work in the Apostle Paul, he needs to work in you and me. Right? That's just the, the, the issue. So, is it just about change? Will any change do? If I just change my behavior, is that enough? Is that all God is really looking for is a change in behavior? Well, I don't think that's true in my own children. If I want to them to change, it's not just their behavior. I don't want them just to change their behavior because I'm not teaching them anything. What I want is them, for them to change in their heart attitude. The motives why they do what they do. All right? I want you to stop acting like that, not to just stop acting like that, but because that's not what you're supposed to do. You shouldn't punch your brother in the face. It just that's not what you should do. Right? And you should know that inside, not just when mom and dad aren't around. Right? Um, anybody have older or younger brothers and sisters? Mom and dad leave you home? What happens? Well, it usually turns into a fight. All right? That's what I did with my little brother. Um, he just found his life goal to annoy his older brother. And so that meant I needed to pound on him for a while. Well, I didn't do that when mom and dad were home. Why? Because I get in trouble. You understand? My heart wasn't changed. But when mom and dad came home, what did I do? I'm a little angel. What are you talking about? Well, that's not heart change. That's just change for change's sake. Right? And it's the same thing. Uh, so you meet, uh, you, you, you've got a lady that you work with. And she's usually down in the dumps and, and frustrated and angry and, and confused and all these things because her life at home and her relationship with her husband isn't right. Well, then all of a sudden she changes and her attitude is right. right? She's, she's cheerful and happy and, and, and seems to be enjoying her time. And so you begin to approach her and say, hey, I've just, you're seeming like you're feeling great today. Well, what's going on? Now, the change is right. The attitude is right. She should want to enjoy life and, and, and be fulfilled in her job and all these things. But the issue might be, well, because, you know, her husband wants a divorce. And she's happy about that. You understand? Change is right, but it's for the wrong reason. Uh, anybody complain about their boss at work? Don't raise your hand. <laughs> but then what happens when that manager or that boss moves to another division or another area? Oh, man. I can enjoy my job again. You understand the change in my attitude is right, but it's for the wrong reason. I should have not allowed that to get me down or frustrated or have a bad attitude. Right? I should have change in my heart. Um, a teenager may, who's spoiled may have a change of heart or a change of attitude uh, toward their parents, but it's because their parents acquiesced and gave them something they wanted, and they won the, the argument, so to speak, rather than just honoring their parents to begin with because that's what they're supposed to do. You understand how it's not just change for change's sake, it's change because it's a right motive and a right attitude, a right, a right heart that's been changed in that person, all right? Um, I want you to take your Bible to Mark chapter number 7. Mark 7, and I want you to see the Lord speaking about this personally. Mark 7, verse number 21. So you feel desperate and fearful or angry um, and then circumstances change and you don't feel that way anymore. 
the issue isn't necessarily the circumstances. The issue is circumstances often draw out what's already in my heart. Right? You may have heard the illustration of a sponge. What's in the sponge comes out when pressure comes. Right? And so it's the same thing in your life and in my life. The issue in my heart and in my life isn't stuff around me. The issue in my heart and life is what's already inside of me. And then the stuff around me, the, the things that happen in my life, the, the pressures at work and the relationships at home or with family or, or friends, it, it, when those things go wrong, that's what brings out what's already inside of me. All right? So look at Mark chapter number 7 and verse number 21. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed what? Well, evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. So all of those things that we say are out there in the world or that we say, boy, I hope that doesn't influence me. You understand where that comes from? It's not necessarily the world. Where that comes from is inside every one of our hearts. Right? Where does pride come from? Not from anybody else. The, the issue is I'm prideful. I have foolishness in my own heart. All right? And so that's what Jesus is saying. Is it's not everything outside that's making you rotten. It's that's what's already inside of every one of us. And that just comes out and it, it does have an influence on us. All right? Um, James 4 and verse number 1, you don't have to turn there. Here's what James says. From whence come wars and fightings among you? That is the outward uh, uh, actions of our attitudes. Where does all that come from? So he answers, come they not hence even of your own lusts or the only, or the, the rather the, the inward desires of your heart? See, when you fight with somebody else, you're, you're in an argument with somebody else, the issue is not because of maybe something they've done. The issue is, Usually, it's because something they've done you don't like. Right? It offended you, or, or it got at you, or it annoyed you, and so then you lash out, or you, you respond to that. And what Jesus says regularly through the New Testament, what God says regularly through his word is, understand, these things are issues of your heart personally. Don't go looking to blame everyone else. Look to yourself. Look in the mirror and say, Lord... In my heart are these things, and I, I'm asking you to help me to, to get those things out of my heart. Again, this is a progressive thing. Right? Um, because usually what happens is, when I find something that's, that God wants to root out of my heart, and he's doing the work in my heart, and I about think that I've got, well, look, I got the victory over that one. Something else comes, and then there's just more and more and more of it. Right? Um, you have crabgrass in your yard? I hate crabgrass. Because I pick up one, and then you know what happens is I'll pick it up, and, and if it stays together, then it shows me about five other little things that it's got out there in my yard. It's not just a matter of picking one. There's usually a bunch of little branches of it. Right? It's a weed. And that's really a, an analogy for sin. Is, and it's, I can pick out a, a big chunk, but there's still little bits there. Right? And so I've got to allow the, the Lord to do the work in and through my heart because it's, it's coming from me. We, we don't choose to do things necessarily because of financial issues or social issues or medical issues or circumstantial pressure. We choose to do things often because we have a sinful heart. Right? Now, there's, there's an illustration that the book uses, and as you go through it, you'll read about the illustration of the tea bag. Right? So you, you have hot water, and you put the tea bag in there, and what happens? Well, the hot water activates the tea in the bag, and the flavor from the tea goes out into the, the water, and you have delicious tea, right? Did the hot water make the taste of the tea? No. The tea was already in the bag. The hot water just activated what was already in the bag, right? And it's the same thing in, in your Christian walk. And here, So here's the, the thought on the outline then. With the tea bag, the hot water didn't create the taste, Right? What the hot water did was revealed or drew out what was already in, in the bag. And it's the same thing with your life. Is the pressure doesn't create that in your life. The pressure just reveals what's already in your heart and in your life. Right? So watch for those things and ask the Lord for help to, to know when those things are going on. And, and ask him for help to reveal those things in your life. Verse 
Uh, anybody like to, and again, I just ask questions just to get you thinking, not necessarily for a response or a hand raise, but you ever shifted the blame for your bitterness or anger or despair or why you deceived somebody else or why you were mean to somebody else? Do you ever shift the blame when you get under pressure and those things come out? And again, the Bible says, Mark 7 is a great passage. When pressure from outside comes, when, when it could be you that gets in trouble, when it could be you who has to take the blame, if there's arrogancy or, or a wrong attitude in your heart, what can come out when that pressure comes is looking to shift to somebody else, blaming somebody else, putting, putting the, the cause on something or someone else instead of taking the responsibility for yourself. All right? don't, don't shift the blame. Um, I want you to see this illustration in your Bible. Look at Acts 16, and we'll finish with this. Acts 16. And I want you to see how circumstances don't have to be the, the thing that causes our reaction to be what it shouldn't be. All right? Acts 16. Look at verse... Uh, let's go to verse 20. In fact, I think we can start in verse number 19. Lydia becomes converted and um, she changes her actions, changes what she's doing. Verse number 19, Acts 16, And when her masters saw that the hope of their gains was gone, they caught Paul and Silas and drew them into the marketplace under the rulers and brought them to the magistrates, saying, These men being Jews do exceedingly trouble our city. And teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe, being Romans. And the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates rent off their clothes and commanded to beat them. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, that's on Paul and Silas, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely. Who, having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. So what's happened? Well, Paul and Silas have gone out. They've been witnessing and preaching. And this, this girl gets saved. And when her bosses see that she's no longer going to be involved in their, their sinful ways of gaining money, they get mad at Paul and Silas. And so they have them arrested and accused of all of these things. The, the uh, magistrates, the judges of the town, they, they strip them of their clothing. They beat them with, with whips. And then they cast them into jail. Now, anyone that thinks that's a joyful, happy experience, hopefully none of us, no, that would be horrible. Right? That, would, that would be something that none of us would want. And for the, the average Christian person, our attitude usually would be, at the very least, we would say, well, man, the devil's fighting. I guess I'll just have to do this until God can get me out. That's at the best. At the worst, it's, why am I doing this? I'm just going to give up on it anyway. But notice that's not the reaction of Paul and Silas. Notice what happens in verse number 25. After they've been beaten, publicly humiliated, and thrown into jail, and at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang what? Praises to God. And the prisoners heard them. So you see how outside pressures and influences and, and things that were going on in their life, all that did was reveal what was already in their heart. In the heart of Paul and Silas, the Holy Spirit had already been working and moving, and they had made decisions personally, both of them, to say, I'm not going to allow all this stuff in the world around me to affect what's in my heart. I'm not going to let that get at my attitude." I need to be a different person than the average Joe who walks down the street. I need to be different. I need to be like my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so part of that for them was when outside pressure came and persecution came and beatings came and a jail time came, not for doing anything wrong, but for simply doing what God asked them to do, then their reaction was not one of despair. Their reaction was, let's pray. And let's sing praises to our God. Because he's greater than any of this that we're going through. Wow. Do you understand how that can translate into your life and into mine? Because there's not 
really too many of us here that are facing the kind of persecution that Paul and Silas are facing. Not facing the same kind of circumstances that they're facing. And yet, how many times do we forfeit the opportunity to pray and sing praises to our God? Well, because that's not maybe what's in our heart. And so that's what we're trying to get to in this study is, let's allow the Lord to change our heart to get us to that point. Let's ask God for help to say, boy, when it's not working out my way, I'm still going to praise the Lord. It's not His fault. I'm going to ask Him for help and strength to do that. That's why we're going through this study. All right? So we're going to stop there for today. What I want you to do is, through the week, you can look through your book, and you can begin reading if you want to, but we're going to finish this, I believe, next Sunday morning. All right, unit one, that is. We're going to go through it, and we're going to finish the, the, the notes part of it for you and for me. And then we'll start on the kind of the week, day by day, going through this book, going through the workbook. We'll start that after next Sunday's lesson. Does that sound okay? I'll give you a week's notice ahead of time for all of your drudgery of homework. <laughs> by the way, I think our attitude toward doing something like this can reveal what's going on in our heart. Are we going to be checking up on you and publicly humiliate you if you don't do it? No. No, but you'll be forfeiting what God might want to do. Right? So we want to give you opportunities to, to allow the Lord to work in your heart and life. Let's pray. Lord, thank you very much again for the day. We're grateful for the opportunities that you give to us. We're, we're thankful for the, the lessons we can learn from your word. And Lord, we're just using this book, this curriculum, as a kind of a way to focus our study on the change that you want to bring about in every one of our hearts and lives. So help us, please, to be diligent, to, to just get into your word and to memorize it, to, to study it. And Lord, where we need to make changes, reveal that to us and that we might make the changes that we should. Well, thank you for the help. Lord, help us as we go into the main hour. And Lord, I pray for uh, every person who will be here. I pray that you'd speak to every one of our hearts. Help us, please, to respond to the service, to the message that you'd have us in the way that you'd have us to. And we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. All right.